Taxi he ordered. Answer that letter from Austin. Tell him I saw him out yesterday. He couldn't cover his margin in time at his funeral. Be polite, though. We still may have some more cash we can get. Tell that hospital crowd I never give to charity. Oh, wait a minute. So, say that I've had so many demands on me already. You know, the usual formula. Club subscription. Make out the check. Stop that noise. Stop it, I said. I did. Huh. Fifteen thousand pounds, eh? I'll see about this. Get me Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Yes, Scotland Yard. You heard me. How about the first? No, I don't mean the food. What's bothering me is you're going to the police about this business of the Crimson Circle. What do you expect me to do? Pay the brightest 15,000 pounds without a squawk? Mr. Fuller, you know what happened to Philip Conway. An accident. An accident? Why, the poor old gentleman was shot down in cold blood on his own doorstep. All right, all right. Yes. That was just to frighten the rest of us into paying up, that's all. This time, Scotland Yard's ready for the Crimson Circle gang. See that man over there? I don't like his looks, sir. He's watching you like a hawk. You bet he's watching me. That's Inspector Parr of Scotland Yard. He and his men have never taken their eyes off me for one minute since I got that letter this morning. <coughs> Just how do you suppose the Crimson Circle is going to get me now? Mr. Fuller, what's the matter? What is it? Mr. 
Fuller. Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller. Look, what's the matter? Winter, quick. Stand back, please. Stand back. I'm a police officer. Please, please, please. What's happened? Mr. Fuller, sir. Sergeant Wilson, get these people out of this. Now come on, there should wear please. Now back to tables, back to tables, everybody. Now come on, now come on, now back you go. There you are. wants to see you, Inspector. I'll come at once. Now, Father. Want me to come along, sir? No, I think one of us is all the Commissioner can stand just now. Inspector Parr, are you going to tell the Commissioner that I'm working on this case? Certainly, if he needs cheering up. Both these men were under the protection of Scotland Yard when they were killed. You had complete charge of the cases. Well, what have you to say for yourself, Inspector? Well, we're doing all we can, but... It'll take time. Then meanwhile, the murders will keep on happening, eh? Did you ever hear of Derek Gale? Derek Gale? Private inquiry agent. Writes silly stories about crime for the newspapers. That's the fellow. What's he like? Never met him. And what's more... Well, I'm going to meet him now. I believe he has some special information about last night's murder. Probably wants a story for his newspaper. We'll see. Yes, sir? Show Mr. Derek Gale in. Hey, yes, sir. Mr. Yale? At your service, Commissioner. Uh, how do you do, Inspector Farr? Sit down, Mr. Yale. Thank you. Haven't I seen you before? Only at Luigi's restaurant last night. And I hardly imagine you noticed me. No, I didn't. So you happened to be in the restaurant last night, Mr. Yale? Well, I wouldn't say I happened to be there, Commissioner. I followed Inspector Parr in. You followed me? You must forgive my curiosity, Inspector. But I knew you were watching Lawrence Fuller after he'd received the Crimson Circle warning. So I just trailed along to uh, see what would come of it. Well, I'll be... You said in your note that you had some information to give us about the murder. Oh, yes, the murder. Yes, I thought perhaps that you might be interested. Of course, you've already received the analyst's report on the poison used. No, we haven't. They say that it may be difficult to isolate and identify. I rather imagine it'll turn out to be Lictocasis metalloxine. What makes you say that? May I ask if you found any trace of poison in the food or in any of the dishes used at Fuller's table? No, none at all. That's what makes it all the more difficult. All the more simple, I should say. What are you driving at, Mr. Yale? Just this. The poison I mentioned, a very rare one, is practically tasteless and could be administered in a glass of water without arousing the suspicions of the uh, victim. No, no, no. Couldn't be done that way. Why not? Because we examined the tumbler that Fuller was drinking from when he collapsed. Nothing in it but pure water. Quite so, Inspector. But not all poisons are instantaneous in their effect. This particular one takes uh, even five minutes before it begins its work. You mean to say that the tumblers were switched right after Mr. Fuller took the poison? Precisely. We examined every glass in that kitchen and the staff swore that none had been washed for half an hour. And when you examine the dustbins in the alley behind the kitchen, They'd been emptied. Well, I got there before they were empty. I have the pieces. Oh, yes, Commissioner. You'll find enough dabs there to hang a man, including uh, some of Fuller's, which helped to identify it. You're sure that glass filled poison? Note the odour. Rather faint, almost a perfume. Characteristic of Lictocasis metalloxy. Well, Inspector, it's up to you to find that way to Tony, and we'll compare the dabs. We are looking for you, sir. But it'll take time. Did you particularly notice the waiter at Fuller's table, Mr. Yale? Not until I saw him leave the restaurant, in a great hurry. You saw him leave? When Fuller dropped dead, I suspected he'd been poisoned and that the waiter might have had something to do with it. So I went out of the front door and round the corner where I could watch the staff entrance. Quite a natural thing for me to do in those uh, suspicious circumstances. 
Don't you agree? Why didn't you call a policeman when you saw the man escape? Oh, my dear inspector. And let him get away completely. <laughs> you mean you followed him? Naturally, Commissioner. So you let him get away from you, eh? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that, Inspector. He had me a bit worried at times. Kept dodging in and out of places all night. Until early this morning, he finally settled down. Well, he thought he was quite safe. Are you telling me that you know where this man is? Oh, yes, yes, uh, quite. Uh, I have his address here. 17 Buckler Street, back room on the top floor. Oh, there's uh, no particular hurry, Inspector. He won't get away. Some of my own men are watching the place now. They're very good at that sort of thing. Miss Sylvia Hammond. Your uncle is engaged now. He has a visitor. Splendid. He's wanted one for years. Buy a bunch of flowers, lady. I'm sorry, I can't afford any today. The plan is small a bunch, miss. <laughs> That's right. You bought the whole basket. Whatever made you do such a crazy thing? I never do things by half. Where shall I deliver them? I haven't any address. Oh, poor girl. Must be very awkward on cold nights. It'll be much more awkward for me if your uncle catches me talking to you. Why, aren't I respectable enough? There's a quaint old-fashioned rule in this bank that a working girl is supposed to work. Or don't you know what the word means? I've often wondered. Would you tell me after office hours? I could never explain to you in a hundred years. Well, that's just what I thought. When do we start? Never. I'm telling you. I'm not one to be fooled with, Brabazon. I'm going to give you until 3 o'clock. Yeah, we'll discuss that later. We certainly will. And you're going to do exactly as I tell you, or there'll be trouble. And plenty of it. I'm not going to be fooled with Brabazon. You have reason to know that, Dan. 3 o'clock, I said. Hello, girlie. We're by God reviewing prettier than ever. Oh, please. Say, tell me. How about you and me having that little engagement for tonight? Well... Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, well. We'll just fix that up a little bit later. Who is that bound down? Thank you very much, Inspector. I'll leave the matter entirely in your hands. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Morning, Uncle James. Wait in my office, Jack. Yes, sir. Please have those letters ready immediately, Miss Hammond. Yes, sir. Who's the fellow over there arriving at that desk? That's Felix Marl, one of our clients. What's he do? An importer. Does quite a bit of business with France, I believe. I don't know much about him. My partner, Mr. Braverson, handles his account. Why do you ask? Oh, no particular reason. I thought I'd seen him somewhere before. I'm probably mistaken. Well, how's the going? Don't worry. No, I'll leave all that sort of thing to you. Good day, Inspector. Good day, sir. Endorse this, madam. Endorse it? Uh, yes, please. There, on the back. I happily endorse this. <laughs> 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 Why, hello, magician. See if you can change that into a bundle of frog skin. Frog skin, sir? Sure, a wad of quid, do you think? A wad of quid. I bought you a lovely bunch of flowers. I forgot them just now and left them outside there. What is all this nonsense? But, Uncle James, I thought you were very fond of flowers. Rubbish. You know very well you brought them to that young woman out there. And she wasn't having any. Of course she wasn't. She's more sense, so I wouldn't have her working here in my bank. But is there any reason why I shouldn't talk to a perfectly respectable girl like Sylvia Hammond? Now, look here. She's my secretary, and I will not have you dandying around here during banking hours. Not only that, you no sense of proportion. 
buying a huge basket like that, wasting your money. Well, girly, is hoping you've got a good appetite for that big feed I'm buying you tonight. Thanks a lot, Mr. Marr, but I'm on a strict diet. My doctor doesn't allow me to eat with strangers. Oh, my God, that's a good one. Oh, don't let that worry you at all. You know, you'll be well enough acquainted with me long before dinner time. I'm afraid I'm much too shy for you, Mr. Marr. Oh, uh, don't you ever fool yourself. You're just my type. You ask anyone who knows. Fine, I'll ask the young man I'm dining with tonight. Ate it up again, eh? Well, no harm in asking, as I always say. Don't you ever get tired of always hearing the same answers? Oh, when it comes to horses and women, I ain't never yet been fooled. No, sir, ain't nobody ever going to make a monkey out of me. Oh, nobody would try to think of improving upon you, Mr. Mark. That's right, Gary, that's... <laughs> oh, my God, really, that's good. I, I do like you. Well, then we can tell. Now... There's my telephone number. Just in case you get a little hungry or thirsty along about 8 o'clock, I can take mighty good care of you when it comes to food and drink and, uh, who knows? Maybe a little something to remember me by when you do. <laughs> Goodbye, girlie. Adios. Well, Hammond, if you aren't a queer fish, I've been trying to make you out for the fortnight you've been here, but you've got me beat. Very simple, McCoy. I'm too busy trying to hold down a job to turn for any foolishness. Foolishness, you call it? First you turn down the boss's pet nephew, and he isn't so difficult to look at, and then you give old Marl the bird, and him, with 87,392 pounds, three shillings and ninepence a date. Just why do you need 500 pounds so urgently? Well, after all, Uncle James, it's my own money, and I only want a quarter in advance. Perhaps it is your own money, but your father made me executor of the estate. With strict instructions not to let you squander it on everything. How did that get there? What? Oh, I don't know. After all, it's only a bit of red paper. What? What's the matter? It's the Crimson Circle. That gang of murderers. Just a little warning to both of us, I'm afraid. You mean you've been warned before? This morning, I received an urgent invitation from the Crimson Circle to contribute 20,000 pounds or take the consequences. Yes, no doubt. Uh, tell me, do you know Mr. Derek Yale? Oh, yes, indeed I do. Most of fine gentleman is, too. Always having his little joke. Why, just this evening uh, he said to me, maybe... Uh, is Mr. Yale inside? Oh, yes, Mr. Yale comes here quite often. Uh, could you tell him that Mr. Jack Beardmore would like to speak to him, please? Oh, yes, certainly. Mr. Snobby? What do you want, Maisie? Miss Higgins to you. Go and fetch Mr. Yale and tell him Mr. Beardmore wants to see him in the foyer. He's in box A. Right oh, Miss Higgins. Oh, for no, sir. No manners. Oh, thank you. Pleasure, I'm sure. Don't you sit at door this letter, Mr. Beardmore? <laughs> yes, of course. Even we in the profession find it most fascinating. But I was saying the other day to Gracie, seals, you know. Excuse me. Mr. Beardmore? Yes. Uh, Mr. Yale, I rang up your house and your servant told me I'd find you here. Very thoughtful of us. I'm terribly sorry to have you disturbed. But it's very urgent. It's about the Crimson Circle. Here, we can't talk here. Let's go into the bar. Oh, you ran, sir? Marvellous. If you happen to be right. Yes, sir. I begged my uncle to let you handle the matter, Mr. Yale. But he actually seemed to think Scotland Yard could manage by themselves. There's always something admirable, yet a bit pathetic, about a brave man. Well, well, if it isn't old far. Hardly recognize you in your wonderful disguise. 
I hardly recognize myself. You know Jack Beardmore, Inspector? No. I'm glad to know you. How do you do, Inspector? I saw you in the bank this afternoon. My uncle explained why you were there. Did he now? Do sit down, Inspector. Unless it's against regulations. The only regulation that worries me is this shirt. It hasn't been sat down in for years. <laughs> 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 on duty, Inspector? Just keeping my eyes open. Mm, one always sees things better that way. The rest of the yard, going to take it up too? Yeah. What do you have? Not a drink of water, I fancy. You better try the old brandy, it's more healthy. You know, I've got an eye for a thoroughbred. You can't fool Felix Marl when it comes to a horse. You and the horses have a lot in common, haven't you? That's right, girlie. Me and the police speak the same language. Why, the minute I laid eyes on you, I said, now, now, there's a little filly. What's a high stepper? And I got me. Someone ought to give her a fine new ribbon. And are you going to give me the ribbon, Mr. Mark? Well, now, we'll just have to think about that, little girl. Yes, sir. We'll have to think that over. Excuse me for a minute. Good evening, Miss Hammond. I thought the orchestra played beautifully tonight. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Prima donna in very fine voice, don't you think? Yes. I wish I could say the same to the baritone. But he croaks like a spoiled child. Oh, well, now, what is all of this? I'm sorry. Mr. Marl, this is Mr. Jack Beardmore. Jack Beardmore? Hey, any relation to that old fossil down at the bank? Mr. James Beardmore is my uncle. Well, here. well now, that's rich. There, that's certainly rich. Come, sit down, have a drink, won't you? Any friend of Sylvia's is a friend of mine. Then. I'm sorry, I must rejoin my own friend. Uh, Sylvia, excuse me, I have to telephone. I wonder what got into him all of a sudden. I should say your presence here disturbed him a trifle. Why didn't you follow him, old pa? I know where to find him when I want him. What do you know about him? Well, I haven't got his fingerprints, Inspector. But my instinct tells me that there goes a crook and a possible murderer. Maybe you're right. But I'm more interested in the girl that young Beardmore is with. Mm, quite understandable. Know anything against her? Heaps. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Hammond. I shouldn't have buzzed in the way I did, I know. No, you shouldn't. But you don't understand. I simply couldn't stop myself when I saw you talking to that blackguard. Beg pardon, miss. Are you Miss Hammond? Yes, what is it? Gentleman had to leave in a hurry on important business. He said you were to take his car was waiting. Oh, thanks. Do you want to see the rest of the show? Oh, may I see you now? If you want to. Well, I must be going now, Mr. Yale. Mm, serious as all that, eh? She looks such a charming girl, too. She works in Beardmore's bank. Surely you don't suspect. I don't suspect anybody yet. I just want to see young Jack doesn't lose his way home. Good night, Mr. Yale. Thank you very much, Mr. Bedmore. Oh, not at all. Are you staying here with friends? Oh, no, I live here. Quite alone. Very nice place, isn't it? Oh, yes, I like nice places. Good night, Mr. Bedmore. Good night. Oh, Sylvia, I just want to say if this mild person bothers you, please let me know. Oh, Felix doesn't bother me. I'm quite used to him by now. Good night, Mr. Bedmore. Good night. Mr. Miles. Oh, Mr. Beardmore. Well, what do you want? May I ask what you're doing here? I don't know that that's any of your business. Perhaps I intend to make it mine. Stay here, young fellow. If you know what's good for you, you'll keep out of other people's affairs. I'll show you whose affair it is. Porter, does that man visit here often? Mr. Marl? Why, oh, yes, sir, of course he does. He lives here. Lives here? <laughs> Hello, Inspector. Hello, Mr. Yale. Still wide awake, I see. You don't seem to be sleeping much yourself. Curiosity always keeps me on my toes, Inspector. I'm afraid you'll be disappointed, sir. 
This is only routine work. Uh, but it always fascinates me to see the way you fellas go about guarding houses. Hello, there's something up. What's the matter, Mr. Beardmore? I don't know, Inspector. There's something wrong. Please come in. Where's your uncle, Beardmore? In his study. But the door's locked, and when I knocked just now, he didn't answer. Well, perhaps he's asleep. Where's the room? This way, Inspector. He's in the lock. In the other entrance of this room? No, sir. Something's happened to the master, I'm sure of it. Break it down, Webster. Down. He isn't here. I'm afraid he is here. Uncle James, is he dead? Strangled. Mr. Beardmore. say that someone climbed up here from the garden, Inspector. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who did you post in the garden? Why, actually, there was no one inside the garden, sir. My men were watching the wall outside so that no one could get over. Who was watching the house in the next street? You didn't say anything to me about that house, sir. That wouldn't prevent anybody going through that house, climbing its back wall and into this garden. I see your point, sir. I'm glad your eyesight's improving. Now, post two men in front of that house and tell them to let no one leave. Yes, sir. Then phone the coroner and the yard. Yes, sir. Can you use the telephone? No, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, another one. The surprising thing would have been if you hadn't found one here to add to your collection. My collection is going a bit too fast, Mr. Yale. Mr. Ayers, out. But back soon. All right, I'll wait a few minutes. May I take your hat, sir? No, I'm not stopping long. Will you take this, please? Yes? Then mention it. Thank you. Getting playful in your garden. Were you hit? Yes, right here. Hmm, you came prepared, I see. Well, it's the first time I've ever worn a steel corset. Keep away from that window. It's a bit of a draft out. Do uh, you see anybody? No. I wonder if those shots were intended for me or for you. I hope we shall never find out. Well, we'd better search the garden, hadn't we? Oh, there's no hurry. Whoever he was, he's gone by now. And I don't suppose he'll be back soon. Hmm. You better sit down, Inspector. I think you're right. Best cigar? Oh, thanks. I never smoke. I looked at Mr. Yale to ask you if you had any new ideas on that Beardmore case. Oh, you touch me deeply, old pa. Forgive my emotion. I know I'm telling you, Mr. Yale, that we haven't seen daylight yet. If it had been only one man, it would have been easy enough. But to my idea, each one of those killings was done by a separate member of the gang. And none of the gang even knows what their chief looks like. Three men openly visited Mr. Beardmore that night. Brabazon, the lawyer, Price Gilbert, and Felix Marl. Isn't that right? Ah, but Finch the butler swears that Beardmore was still alive after Marl left. He was the last visitor we know about. Felix Marl. There's a bit of a record, eh? Not in England. But I sent his dabs over to Paris for the police there to check up. He did five years for robbery in France just after the war. Interesting fellow. Of course you found out to whom the vacant house across the garden belongs. The Urban Investment Company. They said at the office the keys haven't been touched for two weeks. See anything of Brabazon there? No. Why? Well, I seem to remember hearing that Brabazon owns most of the shares in that company. Rather an easy matter for him to get an extra key for the house, don't you think? 
I wonder how Brabazon's business affairs have been going lately. No, they're certainly worth looking into. Letter, please. Who delivered it? Man, please. What did he look like? Quiet man. Get out. Yes, please. <laughs> Well, Inspector, it looks as though the bullets weren't meant for you after all. Perhaps you're not on the Crimson Circle mailing list. What are you going to do, Mr. Yale? I'm going to look round the Brabazon Bank. I didn't take the money, Mr. Brabazon. I swear I didn't. <laughs> I gave the envelope to the clerk at Spears and Roberts and when he opened it, there was nothing in it but blank paper. <laughs> well, Simmons, you sure you put the ten pounds in the envelope and oh, sealed it? No doubt of it, sir. I gave the envelope to one of the secretaries and told her to call a messenger and send it right away. Mm. Which girl did you give it to? Well, I can't quite remember whether it was Miss Hammond or Miss McCroy. Who gave it to you, boy? I don't know their names, sir, but I know the girl won't give it to me if I see her again. <laughs> Come in. Inspector Parr and Mr. Yale to see you, sir. Is this the girl, boy? No, sir, that ain't the one. Tell the gentleman to come in. Tell Miss Hammond I want to see her. Yes, sir. Will you come in, please? Good morning, Mr. Everson. Morning. Just in time, Inspector. A little robbery here at the bank. Only ten pounds, but I feel it my duty to make an example of the culprit. What's your name? Good gracious, sir. I didn't take it. Now we'll see about that. <laughs> you wanted to see me, Mr. Everson? That's her. That's the one what gave it me. Miss Hammond. Ten pounds disappeared from the envelope of Pearson Roberts this afternoon. What do you know about it? Nothing. You gave the messenger an envelope to deliver to them? Yes, but if I didn't open it, I, I don't know what was inside. Well, boy? I never took it. I don't know what my mother will say. Oh, stop it! All right, Mr. Bradison. I'll admit it. I took it right enough. Here it is. So. You think you'll get off scot-free by returning the money after I've practically caught you in the act? Well, my girl, that's not the way I do my business. Let me tell you that you and every other employee who may be tempted to stray... Shut up! I said I took it, didn't I? What more do you want? Inspector, arrest that girl. Hello. Thank you, Simmons. Thank you, sir. Oh, thanks. Thanks, sir. Gentlemen, to see you, sir. Hello, my boy. <coughs> Awfully sorry to disturb you now, Inspector, but your housekeeper said I'd find you here. Well, that's why I'm here. It's her fault. Her cooking. <coughs> Anything wrong? Oh, everything. I mean, I've come to see you about Miss Hammond. Well, what about her? Do you know where she is, Inspector? Not at the prison. The magistrate bound her over, so she's free to go where she pleases, as long as she behaves herself. Oh. I went to the place where she lived, but she'd moved. A slippery young woman, Jack. I've got to find her. You know her record? Oh, I don't care tuppence about her record. She's straight, all right. Good Lord. You haven't fallen in love with her, have you? She's in a jam, and I've got to get her out of it. That's enough, Tom. That's enough. Make me a cripple for life. I ought to arrest you for assault. Regular sending cup. Now take my advice, my boy, and forget all about it. I know they're sort. They don't change. Ah, oh, there you are, Inspector. I'll see you in a minute, Webster. Okay, I trailed the Hammond girl as you told me to. Where is she, Sergeant? I don't know where she is now, but I know where she's going to be at two o'clock tomorrow morning. Take a look at that, Inspector. I forget. It's hot in here. I see it, Inspector. Crimson Circle. She'll never join. She will. That's how the Chief of the Crimson Circle gets his new members. But this time, Scotland Yard will be on the membership committee.
don't like this at all, Inspector. She hasn't done anything. It isn't fair to trap her like this. We don't want to trap her. We're after the chief of the Crimson Circle, and we're going to get him tonight. She'll never meet him. Oh, she'll be here all right. And you're going to let her run into danger without any warning? She won't get into danger. The police will not attack until she's out of that car. Now, the best way to save Sylvia Hammond is to break up the Crimson Circle before she can join it. Hello? Webster? Yes. Well, you are awake, then. All your men posted? Yes, sir. Five men at every crossing at the area. Pass the word on to Thompson and Trevor. Yes, sir. Got that just cart ready to block Barton Street? It's up the alley already. to move on signal. Get that lorry at the end of Pernoya Street to stop its motor. I can hear it from here. Right, sir. Switch me on to the wireless. Limit squared area. It's 55 feet in. Don't stop any cars entering area. When signal is given, close in and block area. Stopping all cars and all pedestrians as you tend to leave. Stand by. There she is. Girls just got here. Stand by. Attention. Block all streets. Make no noise. Don't move in till I give the order. Blast it, fools! That's done it. Stop that whistle. Close in. He's getting away. Don't shoot the girl still in the car. Come on, Jack. Close in on the square. Here it comes. There he is. Sylvia, Sylvia. Nobody left that car after the crash, Inspector. That's it. They jumped out of the corner and let the car come full speed on. Now touch every house in the street and block the other end. Right, sir. The next time he wears this, there'll be a rope round his neck. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Yale. Good evening, young man. Hello, old pa. Good to see you, Mr. Yale. Managed to persuade your housekeeper to allow me to await your arrival. I hope you don't mind. Something up? Oh, gentle note I received tonight. Thought it a bit too important to let it wait till the morning. Hmm. Any idea who sent this to you, Mr. Yale? Oh, yes. Quite a reliable source, Inspector. I assure you. He looks as miles mixed up with this crimson circle case and is planning a getaway. Now, come on, Mr. Yale. We may not be too late. Come on, Jack. All right, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Mr. Felix Marlis, yes, sir. But it's a bit late to come visiting, sir. I'm a police officer. Where's this flat? Well, number 17, sir. I'll take you up in the lift. I hope there's nothing wrong, sir. That's queer. It's open. Hello, there's someone. Sylvia. Sylvia, are you all right? What happened? Where's Felix Marl? Why, I don't know. What are you doing here? I, I came to see Mr. Marl about a job. That's a likely story. Inspector, can't you see she's been badly hurt? Oh, I'm all right, Marl. Did you see Marl? No. No, I rang the bell and pushed the door. It opened. I came in. It was quite dark. I suddenly felt a hand over my face. And then this wet scarf. I can't remember anymore. Coming. Keep your eyes on her, Jack. I'm here. Tell him? Yes. Must have put up a stiff fight, too. The girl couldn't have killed him alone. Ah, 
here it is. Another one for my collection. Now it is far from the teeth of the Crimson Circle. Sylvia, why did you come here? You must tell me. Jack, I'm so afraid. You must help me. Promise me you will. I'll do anything in the world for you. I love you. And take this. If they find it, it'll be all up with me. Don't let anybody see it. Put it in your pocket. What is it? I can't tell you now. What do you want me to do with it? Keep it for me. Don't show it to anyone. And don't open it yourself, please. Please, trust me. I'm feeling quite all right now, thank you, Mr. Beardmore. I'll be off in the yard in a few minutes. They certainly made a thorough job of it. I suppose they've cleared up the safe. They have. Sylvia Hammond, I must caution you that anything you say now may be used in evidence against you. You can't frighten me, Inspector Parr. I've done nothing. I arrest you as an accessory to the murder of Felix Marr. No, Inspector. Marr's dead. Now, my girl, what about that money? What money? It wouldn't do me much good to deny it, as you were probably following me the whole time. Well, what if I were in the car? I just thought you might be able to tell us what the chief of the Crimson's clock in the morning to see Felix Marle about a job. I've said all I'm going to say. Now go ahead and lock me up if you want to, Inspector Parr. Photograph of the execution of Thomas Lightman, Paris, 3rd November Put your hands up and come out or I'll shoot. Sylvia, how on earth did you get there? Through the window. But I don't understand. Do you mean that Pa let you go after he'd arrested you? Not a chance of that. I just walked out of this little jail. Walked out? Well, with the help of a member of the Crimson Circle who works there. It's an efficient organization, police connections and everything. Sylvia, for heaven's sake, tell me the truth. Surely you don't belong to that gang of murderers. Oh, there isn't time to talk now. Every second counts. Where's that envelope I gave you? What's it mean? Photograph of the execution of Thomas Lightfoot. You didn't open it. No. Oh, where is it? Here. Give it to me. No, just a moment. I've taken orders from you for long enough. Either you tell me exactly why the execution of Thomas Lightman concerns you, or you don't get it back. I must have it. Why? You tell me tonight you love me. Did you mean it? Yes, Sylvia, I did. So I can't for the life of me think why I go on loving you the way you're behaving. Don't you trust me? Not the least little bit. Jack! Oh, I don't believe you were mixed up with killing Marl. Whatever else you may have done in the past, I don't care. It's your future I'm concerned about. If you don't give me that envelope, I won't have any future. Well, I'll open it and judge for myself. Jack, don't! Listen to me. The Crimson Circle will kill anyone who sees what's inside this envelope. I swear that's the truth. They murdered Marl because he saw. They'll murder you! And Inspector Parr and Derek Yale when I turn this over to them. Give me that envelope or I'll fire. I believe you would. Stay where you are, don't move. What are you going to do now? What do you think? I'm going to give this to the Chief of the Crimson Circle. And you can tell that to Yale and Pa and everyone you like. And see if they can catch us. Good night. 
Yes. She kept me covered with a revolver and said she'd turn the envelope over to Chief of the Crimson Circle. Photograph of Thomas Lightman. Paris. That's right. That's right. And the date, November 3rd, 1923. The execution of a criminal in France doesn't seem to have any bearing on our case. You never can tell. The Crimson Circle seemed to be anxious to get hold of that photograph. I'll get on to the Paris police and find out about this Thomas Lightman. Can you speak French, Ha! Huh? <laughs> As well as I can play golf. Well, I'll tell that phone for you, then, if it'll help you. Thanks very much. There'll be something in this clue, after all. The murderers must be smashed. There must be no more excuses and no more delays. Inspector Parr, your record up to now has been a good one. But I feel that the time has come for you to ask to be retired. I'm sorry, sir. You shall have my resignation at once. I'm sorry, Parr. Mr. Yale, I asked you to call here this morning for a very definite reason. The Home Secretary has authorized me to offer you a special post as Detective Superintendent in full charge of the Crimson Circle case. That's a very great honor, Commissioner. But I must tell you, I've been warned by the Crimson Circle that if I'm still in England at sunrise tomorrow, I'll be a dead man. What are you going to do? I'm going to accept your offer to join the Yard. Good. On one condition, that Inspector Parr remains to work with me. Thank you, Mr. Yale. Really, Mr. Yale? Uh, he is the only police officer who is thoroughly familiar with every detail of the case. Since my term of duty will be a very short one, I feel my only chance of success is to have him with me. Very well. Inspector Parr will be assigned to work with you. Thank you, Mr. Yale. Superintendent Yale. All the resources of Scotland Yard will be placed at your disposal. These officers will be here to help you in every possible way. Thank you, Commissioner. Inspector Parr will turn over to you his file on the case and any information he may have received later. There's little I found out, sir, as you know. The only new thing is the Thomas Lightman angle. What's that? Anything important? We're not quite sure how important it is. Uh, we're still investigating. Any of you ever heard of Thomas Lightman? Yes, I think I have. An Englishman who killed a bank manager during a robbery in Paris about 12 years ago. Got the death sentence. Yes, but he didn't die. How's that? Well, Mr. Pardon. The superintendent can explain it better than I can. You see, he's the one that's been talking to the French police about it. The story is rather interesting. They tried three times to drop the knife of the guillotine, but it refused to do its work. A misplaced nail made it stick, I believe. The crowd broke through the lines and stopped the execution. Naturally, the French newspapers didn't print the story. Lightman was uh, sent to Devil's Island for life. He escaped about two years later and is still at large. What's all this got to do with the Crimson Circle? Well, the superintendent and I think that the chief of the Crimson Circle may possibly be Thomas Lightman himself. Is it too difficult for you to send to the French police for Lightman's photograph and fingerprints? Unfortunately, it is. Paris reports that every record on Lightman has been stolen. Somehow or other, Felix Marl managed to get hold of one official picture. The girl Hammond stole it from him and has probably given it to the chief of the Crimson Circle by now. Seems to me you're right back where you started from, Mr. Yale. Not quite. There's another angle that, to my mind, is even more important than the uh, Lightman one. I have the numbers of some of the bank notes that have been given as ransom to the Crimson Circle. The case is not reported to the Yard. Just before I came to this meeting, I had a message from some of my own agents to say that many of these bank notes had been traced back to the Beardmore and Brabazon Bank. Now, I believe that Brabazon has been acting as fence to some of the mob. Brabazon? Can you prove that? Not unless I catch him in the act. Now, my plan is this. Let Brabazon know that the Yard is beginning to suspect him. That'll put the wind up him and he may try to get away. Then we could... Hello? 
Yes, he's here. Put the call through. It's you, Mr. Yale. Hello? Derek Yale speaking. Oh, it's you, Mr. Price Gilbert. I, 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 I can't understand you. Speak more slowly, please. I said Brabazon had disappeared. Gone, I tell you. Taken everything. All Mr. Beardmore's securities uh, and every penny of cash he could find in the bank. I see. All right, never mind about that now. Inspector Parr's coming over. That last idea of mine came to be a bit too late, I'm afraid. Brabazon's already bolted with everything but the bank's furniture. Inspector Parr, get over there right away. Yes, sir. Inspector uh, Clement, see that all roads and railway stations are watched. I'll get a warrant and go over to Brabazon's house at once. Oh, thank heaven you come, Inspector. We've been waiting for you. There's a bird flown, eh? Seems to be there was a house to leave the old nest. He's taken everything, Inspector. Pretty well cleaned out the whole bank. Jack's mm. private property, too. Oh, this is terrible, terrible. What shall we do? Oh, for heaven's sake, chuck it. I'm sorry. The Inspector will look after everything now, Mr. Price, Gilbert. Well, I, I, I was just going to knock. With your ear? This is an outrage, Mr. Croy. Why were you listening at that door? I wasn't listening. I was just coming to ask you if I could go home. I, I don't feel very well. Shock, eh, through the sudden opening of that door? Well, I've been very nervous lately with all these dreadful things going on around here. Let's have a look at that bag. What's the matter with you? Can't a girl use a lipstick? Hold it, Jack. Give me that back. If it's anything that doesn't concern the police, my dear, you can go right ahead and eat it. Miller McCroy, you will attend the first meeting of the Crimson Circle to be held tonight. Memorize these instructions, then destroy this paper. Failure to follow orders will bring swift punishment. Be at Dock 14, River Road, at exactly 11.57 p.m. Approach on foot. Speak to no one. Enter through open gate. Then cover your face with a white mouth. Give secret knock and password at inner door to walk. Obey further orders to the letter. You will be rewarded. There's a bad gang you're mixed up with, Millie, this Crimson Circle. I don't know anything about it. But this letter proves that you're a member of a gang of murderers. I'm not. You wouldn't like to be booked on a charge of murder, would you? I've never killed anyone in my life. I swear I haven't. All I did was to tell them a few little things about... about what was going on around here. And that's all you ever did, Millie? Yes, sir. I didn't think there was very much harm in it, and they paid me for what I told them. And who did you tell those little things to, Miller? A dark woman. The one who gave me the letter in the street just now. Who was she? I don't know. Ever seen her before? Yes, sir. Where? Oh, street corners and tube stations and places where I gave her messages. Who's the chief of the Crimson Circle? I don't know. I swear I don't know. He had a black hood on the only time I saw him. And he spoke with a funny voice. Do you know any other member of the Crimson Circle? I don't know any of the other members except... Except? Sylvia Hammond. Sylvia Hammond? How did you know she was a member? She gave me the sign. What sign? The sign of the circle, eh? What's the secret knock? See? What's the password of the Crimson Circle? No, I can't tell you that. I can't. They'd kill me. No, I can't. I won't tell you. Very well, Millie McCoy. I must arrest you for complicity in the murder no, of... No, no, Inspector. I knew nothing about those murders. I must caution you. Anything you say now will use the evidence against you. Oh, all right. I'll tell you. The password is... The knife won't fall. The knife won't fall. Inspector, it's the knife of the guillotine and Thomas Lightman. Inspector Lewis will place his men in the warehouse marked D. Inspector Gray will have his men in the uh, garage marked E. Inspector Clement will have charge of the reserves with post at F. The reserves? Yes. We may need you pretty badly before we're through. Trevor, Webster, Parr and myself will get into the meeting somehow or other with the passwords. Denison? Yes, sir? You'll be hidden on the roof opposite. Wait five minutes after you see the last man enter the dock. Then notify all these posts with your wireless. When you officers get that word, you will begin to close in down the side streets with your men, moving slowly and quietly, keeping close to the building line. When I give you the signal from the inside, rush the place. And remember, you're dealing with a mob of desperate killers who'll try to fight their way out. 
I don't want any mistakes. Like the last time when you thought you had the Crimson Circle trapped. Is that understood? Yes, yes sir. All right then. Get to your posts as soon as possible and keep your men undercover. You mean you want us to go there now? Yes, why not? Because it's five o'clock and the meeting probably doesn't start till midnight. Precisely, Inspector. And the Crimson Circle probably won't have its spies out yet to watch for any concentration of the police. And I expect my orders to be carried out to the letter. That's all, gentlemen. Oh, Pa. You remain here to receive reports. I'm going down to the docks to reconnoitre. If I have to change my plans, there'll still be time. Right, Superintendent. Oh, and Pa, that was a uh, pretty smart job of yours, getting all that information out of Millie McCroy. I'll see the Commissioner. He hears about it. Thank you, sir. Inspector Power speaking. No, Superintendent Gale's just left. But I'll take the message. Put him through. It's the French police. You speak French? Like a native. Hello, yes? Oh, you speak English. Oh, good. You no need to go native. Yes. Yes. You have asked for details about a murderer called Thomas Leitman, who has run away, is it not? Eh, mon ami, it is unfortunate, but we have not yet found his dossier. You know, his uh, record. But uh, one man here, he remembers an identification. You can hear me? This light man has what you call it a birthmark. Yes. Yes. He has all around his neck a red ring, a circle, red like blood. Yes. I understand. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Anything up, sir? Oh, what I expected. They haven't found Lightman's records yet. Well, we'll send them a set of our own as soon as we catch the Crimson Circle tonight. What's your number? 55. Am I late? Come inside and keep your mouth shut.
My friends, no one will be permitted to leave until I have declared the meeting closed. I trust that all of you understand the wisdom and the necessity of obeying my command. The strength and power of our organization is evidenced by the growing fear of the public and the helplessness of the police. My friends, the time has come when our society will be dispersed. For this, however, the country must pay. And tonight I have sent our ultimatum to the Prime Minister. Each day, beginning with tomorrow, one member of the government will be killed. Until our terms are met, the payment to us of one million pounds. You, the faithful members of the Crimson Circle, will receive a generous share of this last ransom. Tomorrow, each of you will be given by my messengers your detailed operation orders. Obey them to the letter and you will be in no danger. And the memory of the great Crimson Circle will not soon be forgotten in this land. The meeting is closed. Leave the ship as you came, one by one, quietly and without fear. The Crimson Circle protects its own. The knife won't fall. can't get away from us now. Trevor, break down this door. Right, sir.
Reverson. Shot to the head. Yes, his gut looked like suicide. Yes, probably did away with himself when he knew the game was up. Gramophone was a clever idea. How does it work, Superintendent? Well, it looks simple enough. The pick-up attachment here carries the voice to the loudspeaker in the dummy. No one will be permitted to speak even until I have declared the meeting closed. I trust that all of you understand the wisdom and the necessity of obeying my command. The automatic stop shuts off the record at the end so that he could make his getaway while the speech was still going on. I wonder why he didn't do a bunk when he had the chance. He probably found out we had him cornered. I don't think Babbitt will kill the bunk. Crazy power. You can tell by looking at him. That's just it. The bullet entered his right temple. What of it? Brabazon was left-handed. Was he then? Look at the marks on his wrist. That man was tied up and gagged until someone killed him. Now this record now. The speech lines don't begin until some minutes after the record has started. That will give someone plenty of time to come in here, kill Brabazon, cut his ropes, and get back to the meeting before the dummy started talking. By Jove, perhaps you're right, old pal. Surely Brabazon was a member of the Crimson Circle, or he wouldn't be here on this boat. He was a member right enough, but he's certainly not the chief we're looking for. What's your theory, Inspector? Well, I look at it this way. The chief of the Crimson Circle tipped off Brabazon that you'd found out he was handling the ransom money. Then he got him to hide on his boat, promised to get him out of the country, then he tied him up, stole the money, and Jack Beardmore securities, and finally killed Brabazon. Then you think that someone tipped off the chief that we were planning to raid the meeting tonight? Yes, sir, but there wasn't time then to call the meeting off. It wouldn't matter to the chief if the whole gang were mad, as long as we think Brabazon was the head and give up the chase. While we're standing here talking, the chief of the Crimson Circle is probably making his getaway. Oh, no, he isn't. Take him up, Webster! So you thought you could get away with it, eh? Well, Detective Sergeant Webster, you're the chief of the Crimson Circle and I can prove it. But, Inspector, listen! Superintendent, get the gun out of his pocket. Make one move, Dad, and you're a dead man. Stop that gun on the floor. Keep him covered, Trevor. Sorry to have scared you, Webster, but the only way I can get him to turn his back to me with that revolver in his hand. Why don't you put him down now? Put your hands behind you, Yale. Now, I wonder just when you drew that circle on my back without my knowing. You know how the usual Scotland Yard caution goes, don't you, Yale? That anything you may say may be used in evidence against. Paris told me about that red ring this afternoon. But I didn't tell you because I already knew who you were. Thomas Lightman. Aren't you clever, Inspector? I suspected you for some time, but I couldn't prove it. Then it was really quite simple. I found Sylvia Hammond all by myself last night, made a copy of the photograph she was carrying, and let her deliver it to you as the price of her freedom. An excellent likeness of you on that scaffold, but I think a good English rope can do what a French knife couldn't do. Yale yeah, was so anxious to round up the Crimson Circle. Just a clever dodge to throw us off the track. Eh, hey, Lightman? I wouldn't intrude on your trial for anything in the world, Inspector. Shall we join the others? I tell you, you mustn't handcuff her. I guarantee that Miss Hammond doesn't escape. Inspector, will you tell your man to leave her alone? All right, I'll handle this. So you're at it again, eh? Well, Jack, here's the job for you. I'll put this girl in your charge. My charge? Yes. Do you think you could keep control of her for the rest of your life? Why, Daddy? Are you her father? I most certainly am. I'm mighty proud of it, too. Why, she even talked the commissioner into working on this case after I'd made a mess of it. If it hadn't been for her, we should never have caught the chief of the Crimson Circle. Here's the keys of the bracelet, Jack. Well, you heard what your father said? Yes, Jack. You're to be in my charge for the rest of my life. Yes, Jack, And you're to take orders from me from now on. Yes, Jack, yes, yes. Well then, my girl, come along and have your tea. Yes, Jack, darling. Yes, Jack. 